My name is Tom Tronto, and I believe that I can make you a better trials rider. I am no trials professional, but I am a trials enthusiast, and what I aim to do is get you results. I am trying to put myself out there and the knowledge that I've gained and the practice and the time that I've put into the sport and share it with you. So that's the aim. If you do enjoy these videos and you're getting something out of them, make sure you comment down below because that really means a lot for the channel. Now, I tried a live session on the balance game last night and it was a challenge. It was my first ever live and I'm still tr trying to decide if I want to tear it down or not. But I wanted to get you guys something that was a little bit cleaner, a little bit more polished. My video was just really jerky. I had kind of a Zoom battle, if you will say, as my daughters were trying to help me out. So this session is going to be more of an intermediate as it relates to a balance competition. And so I want to go ahead and present you with a whole bunch of tips and strategies as it relates to getting better at your balance and then go ahead and walk through that game and do it with you. So if you guys want, I do have a free resource for anyone. You can download this balance game score sheet and that way you can compete against me or against other people. The goal is just going to be, or the aim is just going to be to pick eight sections or eight levels and go ahead and do those for 30 seconds or 60 seconds. I'll explain it as we go. And that way you can see how many points you score similar to a real trial. The weather's kind of nasty. It is winter. And so I just thought this would be a fun way to go at it. So a couple tips to get you guys more inclined to practice static balance. We want to move every obstacle, remove all the obstacles to going out and balancing. So if you can bring your bike into the house, even I have a friend who's got their trials bike right in their house. That's going to make it easier for me. It's right here in my garage. So as I pull in, I see it. So if I'm coming home from work and I'm just, you know, I had a stressful day, I'm thinking I'm going to jump on that bike, give it five minutes. I also like to static balance in my tennis shoes as opposed to my boots. Putting on boots is just one more thing that I don't really want to do. I'd rather just jump on the bike and I get a better feel for the pegs and I can articulate my ankles a little bit easier as well. I would also encourage you to keep track of the time you spend static balance and you can do that with a simple time tracker. That app is available on Android platform and I use that just to reference how much time did I put in because when I see I thought I did it every day but I actually missed two days this week then I'm more motivated to give it my best effort going forward. Now, when it comes to transferable skills, I believe that going slow with the motor on and actually just rolling forward as slow as you can is a better drill than static balance. Now, the reason I say it is because we don't often static balance in a section. Unless you're at the advanced level, you're probably not regaining composure and completely stopping. You're going slow and looking around, and so why not practice that way? One of the easiest ways to do that is to set up just an easy section going 10 steps or 10 meters is about 30 feet and try and go straight through that in about 20 seconds. Anything over that is good. You're slipping the clutch, you're having a balance, you're working on a lot of things at once and that's more realistic to what you'd find in an event. In addition to that, you can go ahead and do a figure eight. So figure eights slow, as slow as you can on a figure eight, that is gonna be super realistic to what you're gonna be experiencing in an event. But let's go ahead and get on to static balance. I'm gonna give you some tips before we get started in the game. Now, I want to talk for just a moment about when you're balancing, what you're actually doing. You are teaching your muscles how to fire in order to regain composure of the bike. So this is something that's going to take time. I talk a lot about muscle memory because if you do something again and again, it becomes automatic. So as it relates to athletic sports, I know I can't teach a kid how to play volleyball, both their hands and their upper body and their lower body at the same time. It's just too much to concentrate on. So I know Ryan Young, when he's teaching static balance, he likes to say, just move the bars. Keep quiet feet, don't move those at all, and just make adjustments with the handlebars. And the reason is that as you're learning, you can only concentrate on so many things at once. So if you're trying to balance and you're mixing your upper body and your lower body, you're just going to get confused. As well, I think everyone learned how to balance on two wheels from riding a pedal push bike. And as a result, when you're pushing on those pedals, you're actually causing instability with your feet, and then your hands are helping to regain balance and control. So our bodies already know a little bit about regaining balance and control with our hands, so we might as well start there. So for beginners, I would say the bike is gonna be almost completely straight up and down, and we're just gonna be focusing on making adjustments with our hands. So we're gonna go ahead and jump on the bike. I'm gonna encourage you guys to do the same, and we're just gonna practice for a little bit here. Now, when you're first starting out, I would encourage you to use a balance support. So I would put my front wheel up against a post or some big object. That way I can lean it into something and that's really going to help. In addition to that, you can also deflate your tires. I usually run around four in the back and six in the front and you can do about, I don't know, a pound or two out of each. So as you deflate the tires, that's definitely going to make things a lot easier. In addition to that, you can also dig a ditch. So if you're out in the yard or something, you can dig a little hole. And when you put your front tire in there, you're going to get a lot bigger contact patch and make this a lot easier. So if you're just starting out, give yourself some time because this is going to take a little bit to get used to. 
Now, as a beginner, I would say just moving those handlebars. So I'm going to keep my feet as quiet as possible. And as I fall to the right, I'm going to turn the wheel to the right a little bit. And as I fall to the left, I'm going to turn it to the left a little bit. This is going to be not that hard as you're keeping the bike straight up and down. However, once the bike gets beyond a certain degree of lean, you can't save it with just the handlebars alone. So we are going to move into now talking a little bit about peg pressure. So if you want to experience just practicing with peg pressure, what I'm going to encourage you to do is go ahead and put the bike on a full lock. So both brakes on, full lock turn and keep it there. When you're keeping it there, the only option you have is to adjust your balance with your feet. The wheel's not able to move because it's in full lock. And so you're going to be starting to fire different muscles. This is going to take time for you to get used to, okay, I'm falling a little bit to the left. I need to push more weight on the right. And as you're doing that, you're also pushing and pulling with the handlebars. One of the easiest ways to experience that push and pull of the handlebars and to understand what's taking place. If you put it on a full lock and you intentionally lean too far to the side. So I'm leaning with my front wheel to the left and I'm going to lean the bike too far to the left. As I do, what's going to happen is I'm going to start pulling in with my left hand. So I'm leaning too far, pulling in with my left hand and I'm pushing a little bit with my right. I'm also putting way more weight on my right foot. So I'm intentionally putting additional weight, maybe 70% of the weight on my right foot. Very similar to when you're turning in a slow direction, but that push and pull of the bars is something that takes time to get used to. Again, we want to wire our bodies and help our brains understand and our bodies move together. And this just becomes automatic, but it takes time. In addition to that, when we really start to lean too far in order to save it, in order to not take a dab, because as you're practicing this, you're gonna be able to start saving when you almost fell, you're gonna to wanna to learn to turn your ankle. So I'm gonna intentionally roll my right ankle out, which is gonna bring my knee out. As I do, I'm getting more wide to the side because the bike is leaning to this side, I need to get wider with my body. So the ankle roll is gonna be the solution to that. In order to practice that, I don't have to be in full lock, but I am gonna go ahead and lean the bike too far to the left. And once it gets to a certain point, I can't save it, except if I go ahead and roll my ankle. When I do, the bike starts to lean straight back up. So intentionally too far to the left, roll the ankle, it comes back up. Just thinking about getting my knee out wide as I do. Ah, can't save that one, but that's the idea. I actually wanna to fail to both sides of this learning curve. I wanna to fall too far to the left and see what I can save and bring the bike back up. So I want you to experiment at this point with rolling the bike too far, allowing it to lean too far, and then rolling the ankle. As you do, you're gonna to start to regain balance and be able to save it. Another great way to work on that peg pressure is to go ahead and static balance with one hand. So as I go ahead and let go with my left hand, I'm not able to turn the bars. So now I'm forced to just be using peg pressure in order to stay upright. So balancing with one hand is really gonna enforce what I'm doing with my feet. So now I'm teaching my ankles, my legs, my feet. I'm, I'm creating that neurological pathway between my brain and my feet. Here's how you stay in balance, feet. And now I've taught my hands. Here's how you stay in balance. And as it starts to work together, it's a combination of both the bars and the feet. All right, a few final tips before we start our game. The center of gravity will make a big difference. So a lot of times we're standing up pretty tall because we don't want to fatigue our legs. But if you go ahead and squat down a little bit, all of a sudden static balance gets easier. Your center of gravity is lower and it's much more simple to balance, but this is more strenuous on your legs. I'm going to go ahead and lean forward over the handlebars. As I do, I can feel the steering inputs a lot more. So I quickly gain control of the bike. If you lean back with your hips and your hips are more over the rear axle, the bike's more stable, it's less responsive to the steering. So you do have to have a little bit more balance, but those balance inputs, it, it's gonna be less noticeable. So it's just a more stable experience. Okay, now that we've had a quick practice session, I want you to go ahead and take a breath because I'm gonna explain the rules of this balance game. It's gonna help if you have something to keep track of your score on, a simple piece of paper will do as I run you through these eight intermediate sections. You guys can also download this balance game scorecard as well as a time log. This will be really helpful as you want to experiment and play different sections or different rounds of this as well. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and start a timer, either 30 or 60 seconds, and we're going to treat it like an event. You go through that section as many times as you touch your feet, is as many points as you get. It's just as many as you get. So I'm not going one through three and then five. I'm going to run you through eight different sections similar to an event. And we're going to add up our score at the end, the lowest wins. Honesty is going to be the best policy. So I am going to encourage you guys to jump in there and leave a comment with what your score is. 
I think this will be a lot of fun if I hear from you, the viewing community, how you rank on this challenge. So go ahead and drop your comments below with how you did at the end. Once we start, there's no mulligan. So as soon as we start that timer, if you quickly dab and put your foot back up, no, 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 it still counts as one. If you do put your foot on the ground, I'm gonna encourage you to get it back onto the bike within a couple of seconds. Unless it's specifically called out that you need to be able to do a transition right wheel to left, you can go ahead and put your foot down when you're moving from one side to the other. Okay, I think you guys are gonna be able to see this timer just barely. The first one is gonna be no brakes each direction. So 30 seconds one way, 30 seconds the other way. You can put your foot down as you alternate between sides. Here we go. Just about time to switch sides, so we're going 30 seconds on the other side. You can put a foot down as you transition. Wow, five seconds and I lost it. All right, time. So I got one point. I'm gonna go ahead and just run straight through this. I'm not gonna practice and edit and cut all this out. The next one that we're gonna be doing is 10 squats each way. So when you're doing a squat, you've gotta dip all the way down until your backside touches the mud guard. So 10 squats on the right, 10 squats on the left, all of that inside of 60 seconds. You can keep your foot on the brake, hand on the brake pedal. I would recommend that, that does help. I'm gonna try and slow down my heart rate a little bit. Find a good focal point. Here we go. Okay. Just about at halfway. Go ahead and switch sides, we're at 30 seconds. 10 more squats. Second, 20 squats on that one. That felt good in the legs. Whew, definitely got to settle down a little bit. The next one's going to be four transitions. So we're only going to go 30 seconds. And we're going to try and get four transitions during that time. So a front wheel to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, four times inside of 30 seconds, no dabs. Here we go. All right, I did my four and I still got 10 seconds left. All right. Now, if you didn't get all four transitions, I would go ahead and give yourself a point for each one that you didn't get to. Same thing with the squats. If you were one squat short, you're gonna go ahead and take an extra point for that. Next one's gonna be seated. <laughs> so this one's pretty challenging. Uh, you're gonna be sitting on the back mud guard for 30 seconds. Now, because you're seated, almost all the uh, balance corrections are gonna be done just with the steering. So if you guys wanna go ahead and practice this for just a second before we get started, I'm gonna let my heart settle. One thirty seconds seated. <clears throat> I find it's easiest to actually start standing up and then sit down as opposed to starting seated. Mm -hmm. 
Here we go. I got one already. Okay, I took a point early on just trying to get in position, but I'm still counting it. So I'm up to two total points. The next one's gonna be one handed each way. So we're gonna go one hand to the each side. You can touch your foot as you transition if you need to, but it's gonna be a total of 60 seconds. Ready, go. Okay, half the time, go ahead and switch sides. Almost knocked over the podium. All right, I got three points on that one. I'm up to five now. <sighs> it's hard to look at the clock and also uh, look at my concentration, my focal point, but what the heck, that's where we're doing it. All right, this next one's gonna be one-handed, but it's gonna be the opposite direction from previously. So I was turning my wheel to the left and holding on with my right hand. <laughs> now I'm gonna keep the wheel to the left and hold on with my left hand. This is gonna be a lot of peg pressure. So opposite hand, as you get ready to do this, give you just a moment to get your composure as you start to stand up. So I can't start this and get into position at the same time. So this time holding on with the other hand. started with that one hand. Oh. It's actually supposed to be this. All right, I screwed up a little bit and had the wrong hand going. For me, the opposite hand would be turn to the right, hold on with the right hand. <laughs> this is all just for fun and getting better at practicing. <sighs> all right, we just got two more rounds. This next one is gonna be one foot each way. So it doesn't matter to me which foot you have on, which way your handlebar is turning, but it's gonna be one foot only, both hands on this side, then 30 seconds later, we're gonna to switch to one foot. I'm gonna switch my steering to the other side as well. One foot only on the bike. And go. I'm gonna switch sides.
All right, definitely could feel the workout in the legs on that one. Now, the last one's gonna be no hands. So we're just dropping down to 30 seconds. No hands at all. I have found that it really helps to get onto that brake pedal. So when I'm going no handed, I like to have my foot on the brake in order to give myself a little bit of forward backward to balance. It might be a little bit hard for me to start this timer and be no handed and get into position. So go ahead and get on your bikes, get ready. This is where I need my assistant to help get started. And go. Yes, made that one with no dabs. So that is the end of this balance challenge in an intermediate, or maybe that was even advanced, but I'm gonna call it intermediate round. Now, I don't even know how many I have because I'm trying to film this all in one take so I can prove to you this is actually my score and there's no edits, but I think I had five total points. So um, I'm gonna go back and watch it and call me out in the comments if I'm wrong, but that's what I'm gonna encourage you guys to do. Let's go ahead and have some fun, practice your static balance, challenge yourself. And honestly, it's just about making improvements, not necessarily who wins, although there are some bragging rights that can be attained. So thanks for playing the balance game with trials progression. Now, if you didn't know, I have been working on building a website as well. So in order to get this scorecard, in order to download this, you can just go to trialsprogression.com forward slash balance. I'll include the link below, but that way you guys can get something to record your scores as well as your time that you've been spending practicing static balancing. Hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, drop a comment below and hit that like button. It definitely helps the algorithm with YouTube promote this out to more people. I'll see you in the next one.